This video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, today we got a test between the 13 inch M1 from 2020 and the 16 inch M1 Pro from the end of 2021. Let me introduce you to Shashank. Hey, I'm Shashank. So when it comes to these two computers, what I really care about is video editing. How quickly do they help me get a project done? Shashank, how about you? Well, um, this is my main machine. So essentially I use it for video editing as you do, and I also use it for college and for all sort of my entertainment needs as well. So this is just like one all-in-one machine for me. Truth be told, I totally had this existed when I got this, I definitely would have gotten this. Where I'm coming at this test from, should I basically trade this in or sell this and grab myself one of these? We did a plethora of tests. One was exporting, two is scrubbing back tough to scrub footage, and three is how well do these machines play back unrendered, graded, stabilized footage. So the machines that we're comparing today are my 2020 M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch with 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM compared to Shashank's 2021 M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro with one terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Let's dive in first to the scrub test. So basically for me, the way that I edit is I'll scrub through in the browser to see where I want to set the in point on a clip and where I want to set the out point. With 24 frame per second footage, super responsive on my computer, but I found that on my computer on the M1, when it's 120 frames per second, I can't do that well enough to be able to really get a grasp of what part of that clip I want to use. So I end up always having to try to create transcoded media. The test went pretty well. Like I said, it's lousy on the M1. The M1 Pro scrubbed significantly better than the M1 in my opinion. Was it good enough for me to edit from? Like, would I edit that way if I had this machine? Probably, if I was in a rush and it was a daily vlog and I wanted to get something done, I probably wouldn't transcode clips, though the performance of the clip transcoded was still significantly better. When it comes to their ability to play back unrendered footage, they were both very comparable. I was impressed. We put some heavy color grading on the footage. We did some stabilization. We did a speed ramp and the M1, I was impressed, could play it back unrendered like without any issue. Same goes for obviously the M1 Pro. Shashank did notice that it was smoother. It was definitely smoother and like less pauses in between cuts on the clip in the timeline. Again, negligible enough for me to be like, that's a deal maker, like I gotta upgrade this computer. The M1 on your computer like had a slight little lag on the M1 Pro, it seemed to be relatively smoother. It didn't, yeah, it doesn't stutter at all yeah. when it started that clip. Much more similar to how it would actually play back, you know, once you've exported and you upload right. it to YouTube. So, you know, they're definitely, it, again, definitely better. Is it better enough to justify spending an extra thousand dollars? Just on that alone, probably not for me. Um, yeah. If I had an option to get a M1 16, uh, 16 inch MacBook mm. or 15 inch MacBook, I might have just gone for that, yeah. to be honest. Now you're getting into where I feel like really the main comparison between these and what makes the 16 inch M1 Pro so much better than the 13 inch M1 for video editing and that size. Hands down, without a doubt, having a bigger screen to see more footage, to see more tracks, to just have more space in your editor, we're using Final Cut, is huge. You know, that's a, that's a huge thing. And that's where we start to get to, where I start to get in a little bit of envy of like, man, I would really love that size screen again. Real quickly then, we should just talk about the I.O. on both these machines. You know, the M1 from 2020 is notorious for having these two ports, which, you know, oftentimes you need one of them to charge. Right. And the other, you know, which gives you one more port to be able to communicate with a drive or whatever. Right. When you come over to the M1 Pro, you have three Thunderbolt ports, you have HDMI, you have MagSafe, so you can charge it with MagSafe, giving you you know, all three of those ports back. Right. It's the SD card radiator. Yes. Like it's a huge, it's a huge upgrade. So when you have the screen size in conjunction with all of those extra ports, like again, now we're starting to get more into that envious, I want that. Right, and, and I guess like for a videographer or like creators in general, yeah. like if 
you have anything to do with a camera, the SD card slot is somewhat of a must. Mm. And knowing that you have an SD card slot that you can easily occupy and yet you still have three Thunderbolt ports to deal with, to plug in with how many, however many like drives you want like, or probably like two physical drives or mm -hmm. maybe one adapter for multiple more drives. Major check over in the M1 Pro 16 inch from yeah. 2021. Squarespace is your all-in-one online website building platform. The templates are absolutely fantastic. You look professional without needing to know how to code. You can sell stuff on your Squarespace site. You can schedule appointments through it. Whatever you need to do on your website as a small business owner, Squarespace has it for you. If you want to try it out, go to squarespace.com slash Cody Warner, get a free trial, and then when you're ready to buy, use the code Cody Warner to get 10% off your first purchase. All right. Lastly, when it comes to this export test, what we were doing, I had a pretty complex timeline. It was 11 minutes and 32 seconds long. Bunch of effects, like LUX all across it, bunch of text, bunch of stabilization, different types of media from the iPhone, 4K 120, the most complex timeline that I have done in the last year. The way that it turned out is the M1 was able to export it in 14 minutes and 10 seconds. So 11 and a half minute timeline, 14 minutes and 10 seconds. And that was going to an external SSD. We ran that same test over on the M1 Pro. It did it in 13 minutes and five seconds. We also ran it on the M1 Pro library on the external drive, but exporting to the internal uh, storage on, on the computer. And it did that in 12 minutes and 32 seconds. So that was slightly faster. That said, the way that I work is always off of a external SSD. So the time difference that really mattered to me was that 1305 compared to the 1410. So about a minute difference between these two machines. Shashank, in your opinion, is that a, is that a big enough difference? <laughs> like, okay, for $1,000, I was pretty underwhelmed by that right, difference, right. Uh, to be honest. Because, and that was the first test we did. So we're like, yeah. oh shoot, like, does this even? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and knowing that, okay, they're performing, performing at their full capacity, I felt like it could have done better. Mm -hmm. The conclusion that I came to is I'm not gonna make the jump. I'm not gonna trade this in or sell this and get this computer. I'm not gonna make the upgrade. Hopefully this was helpful for you if you're trying to decide, should I save the thousand bucks? Should I go higher? Obviously you always want the cream of the crop, but are you gonna be able to make do with something less expensive, smaller? The answer is definitely yes. And at that point, if you have the budget, M1 Max might be the move for you, but mm -hmm. I would not exactly go for M1 Pro. I went for it, I'm very happy with it because it exceeds my expectations for my needs. Right. With these tests in mind, I wouldn't go for that. Love it, man. Thanks so much for being on the channel. Thanks for having me here.